American American History Month, better known as Black History Month, annually commemorates historical figures such as writers to liberation struggle influences in the African diaspora. In contemporary times, Black History Month has become a movement in appreciating movers and shakers in all of life and as it has become tradition and awareness will be led by the United States Embassy. Joining us to share more this morning on this is uh, Eric Atkins from the American Embassy as well as Senator Mwandi, a 2018 uh, Mandela Washington Fellow alumni. Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Eric, I'd like to start with you, and perhaps just for the sake of our viewers as well. Give us a bit of a background on, on black history. Uh, in the United States, the Black History Month idea started with a historian trained at Harvard University named Carter Woodson. And this was almost 100 years ago, back in 1926. Mm -hmm. uh, during the course of his studies, he realized that no one was really focusing on this subject mm -hmm. of the contributions that African Americans had made to United States culture. Mm -hmm. um, he started this initiative and chose this particular week in honor of the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln on February 12th and Frederick Douglass on February 14th. How would you say have the ideologies, you know, around black history changed within contemporary times? Well, from those early beginnings, uh, it, it started in just three states and a couple of cities. It, it grew through civil society, like many things in the United States. It starts with uh, an individual with an idea through his or her efforts. It grows through civil society, um, schools, churches, community groups. And in the course of 50 years, uh, what began as Negro History Week was officially recognized in 1976 by President Ford as Black History Month. And it's grown ever since, and it's expanded. Uh, in recent years, you've seen uh, more and more films come out, um, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, uh, Hidden Figures, um, uh, things that are historical based have also fed into things that are just more unique expressions of, of culture and creativity, like uh, Black Panther. Um, mm -hmm. From a society standpoint, the Black, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement in the United States has been a, a hot topic in, in recent years. And that awareness and sensitivity, the policy changes, the dialogues are increasing. And from a political standpoint, you've seen uh, this, this recent year with uh, the elections in November, you've seen now a record high of 50 members of the uh, Black Congressional Congress. When I first came to Namibia two and a half years ago, one of the first things I was able to work on was bringing uh, Johanna Hayes. She was our 2016 U.S. Teacher of the Year, mm -hmm. and she was a guest on your show. She was just elected the first black congresswoman in the state of Connecticut. I saw that, yes. So Black History Month has fed into just a larger societal awareness, a, a deeper, richer understanding of African American contributions to all facets of American endeavor and society, and uh, it, it just continues to, to expand. Mm -hmm. So, now, would you like to add on to that in, in terms of what you uh, see, how things have changed in contemporary times, and also with everything that Eric has mentioned, do you think the changes have been sufficient, uh, you know, for the black community, for black history? I think that the, obviously, the changes might not be sufficient in the way we want to see it, mm -hmm. but I think they've been significant and mm -hmm. they've definitely increased. Um, during my short time in the States, it was really uh, amazing to see and understand uh, what it means to be black from that side. Um, I think we often have the misunderstanding that because we're black from Africa and they're black from America, it's the same thing, and it's not, no, it's not. but it is at the same <laughs> time, you know? Um, so I think what was very interesting to me was to, to learn the dynamic um, of where we're similar and how we are different and how to bring that together. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the most fundamental things that um, has happened over time is the advent of the internet and how that has enabled us um, on the continent to learn more about black, Amer uh, black Americans and how it has um, enabled black Americans to learn about continental Africans. Mm -hmm. So I think that has been amazing. And I mean, uh, he mentioned Black Panther. I think that was one of the biggest things that brought the two groups of people together in an interesting way. And there are other ways that have been coming. I think if you followed uh, social media in December, there was a huge festival in Ghana and how Ghana is now you know, marketing the 
the ports of slavery uh, to black Americans who are able to afford it to travel and they go there during December and there are festivals around it, etc. So that's very interesting to me. So I think over time what has happened is the awareness has increased. Has the awareness led to changes that are sufficient? I don't, I, I can't say mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Just for interest's sake, um, you mentioned that there are similarities and different differences between uh, black Africans and African Americans. Just highlight some of those to me. So I think the similarities that were interesting to me were like issues of family dynamics, mm -hmm. how we understand family culture, mm -hmm. um, our, our relations to our parents, and how we relate as siblings, mm -hmm. um, as black people from Namibia or black people from Africa. Right. I saw a lot of similarities with that. But in terms of differences, it was definitely um, interesting to see how black people in America are more liberal than black people on the continent. Mm -hmm. um, just their ideas of liberalism were very interesting to me. Um, so that was a huge difference for me. I thought, oh goodness, that's not something that I would ever be able to, to say or to think. And it's interesting to see that that's a norm in your community. Yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Eric, uh, let's talk about the activities that you have lined up for this year's commemoration. Yeah, um, like past years, uh, every Friday we show a film related to uh, Black History Month. Uh, those films are at 6 o'clock and are open to the public. Every Thursday we are doing a discussion series. Um, Senu is going to be one of our guest speakers in a couple weeks. Last night we had a fascinating discussion um, about uh, apartheid era policies in Namibia around sanitation and how that has affected uh, black identity and black dignity. Um, these, uh, all these events are free and open to the public at the American Cultural Center in the San Lam building, the third floor uh, downtown. So there will be a movie tonight? There's a movie tonight. Uh, it is Black Panther tonight. I was just about to ask what movie it is. Okay, fantastic. So how long is, will this be running for, the duration of February? The duration of February. Uh, and of course, I should mention that uh, Black History Month then rolls into March, which mm -hmm. is uh, Women's History Month. Yeah. So I believe that uh, March 1st is a bit of an overlap, a bit of a transition. Okay. The discussion that you're going to be involved uh, in, Seno, what is it centered around? So firstly, I want to say thank you to the American Cultural Center that I actually got to pick my own topic. Mm. Um, and I do have to mention that uh, the credit to my topic uh, is from Davos, the recent Davos that the World Economic Forum had. Um, one of the topics they had was uh, the future of the African market. And in the discussion, they were talking about how Africa is not in the discussion in technology development. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get to make any comment on technological development in the global context. And I thought, why? And they started talking about how in the last 20 years, Africa has not come up with a single piece of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Anything related to blockchain technology mm -hmm. has not come from the continent. So because we haven't produced anything technological in that context, we don't get to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And I was just so stunned by that statement and obviously then started watching a lot more around it. And I realized that we do have a problem with our level of innovation and what we are producing mm -hmm. and what is getting absorbed by the global market. Mm -hmm. So the topic that I came up with is, is African cultural norms preventing us from being innovative mm -hmm. and technologically so. Um, and the statement that I'm going to ask is, is our conservatism hindering us? Um, are we treating our children from an, a, a perspective of expecting perfection from them mm -hmm. when innovation is a process of inherent failure. Mm -hmm. You fail from one level to another and that's how you discover. Mm -hmm. But do we allow failure in African households? Do we allow failure in African schools? Because mm -hmm. failure provides an environment for learning mm -hmm. and as you learn, you innovate. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to bridge the gap between the African cultural norms that we have of conservatism and perfectionism mm -hmm. and how is that going to affect our ability to innovate and create technology? Very, very interesting topic. Yes. Who else will form part of this discussion? So I don't want to do this alone. I, I have uh, two friends that I have conversations with and one of them, Brendan Imig, always asks me at the end of our conversation, why aren't our conversations podcasts? So I asked the, um, the Cultural Center if I could 
could have a panel, so he'll be with me on the panel. And then um, a gentleman called Muhammad Sheh, who, who I also talk to a lot about innovation, will join me on the panel. Fantastic. Yes. Well, Eric, uh, tonight is, you know, the screening of Black Panther. It will take place at the American Cultural Center. That's correct? Mm -hmm. What other activities over the weekend or next week? And then I also just want to get the date for when your discussion will be. Um, as I mentioned, every, every Thursday is a discussion. Mm -hmm. That's at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, I misspoke. Forgive me. The, f the films are at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, okay. Uh, don't, don't want anyone to be late for that one. Um, <laughs> so films on Friday at 5 o'clock. Uh, as far as the, the cultural center goes, we have ongoing activities um, in order to try to promote a culture of reading in Namibia. Yeah. We, um, we have volunteers, embassy staff, and family members go out on Wednesdays to read out loud uh, in area schools, grade four and five. We do internet training for those without access to technology at the cultural center. Um, through the cultural center, we also do uh, a number of different um, guest speaker programs, uh, there, it's, a, it's a full library, and there's a lot of movies, and a computer center. So it's, it's very much a, a free center for public and personal development. All right, thank you so much. Uh, discussion next week Thursday? Oh, mine's on the 28th. On the 28th. Uh, next week Thursday will be Stephen Haraseb, okay. I think. Um, and he will be talking about uh, gender issues and social psychology, the psychology of Namibia. So that's also going to be an interesting one. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. That was uh, Eric Atkins from the American Embassy, as well as Senna Namwande speaking to us this morning around Black History Month that is celebrated every year during the month of February. We'll be back shortly after this.